Before we get into this week's recap of Impact Wrestling, uh, Impact Wrestling can't seem to stay out of the headlines in the uh, wrestling world, so we've uh, learned at least three things this past week. Uh, the first one being, the GFW name is no longer being associated with Impact Wrestling. I don't know if we ever got any clarification on why that happened, but regardless, it's not there. Two, we found out that Bound for Glory will take place in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So, it's funny, the, um... They decided to pick a smaller venue for this. I believe it was the Aberdeen Pavilion. So apparently this place holds about 500 people, which is what they're planning on drawing. Um, and it's funny because this made headlines, and everybody is saying what a joke it is that they're only going to have 500 people at their biggest pay-per-view or second biggest pay-per-view of the year. And these are the same people that are out every day showing pictures of WWE and their half-empty arenas. So, I, to me personally, I'd rather see a venue hold a smaller crowd, but it be jam-packed, which is what I believe Nordholm made a statement saying that's what they're looking for. The reason they chose this arena is because they want the intimate feeling, you know, of being with the fan up close with the fans for the wrestlers and um and it being a packed house because i mean i think full sale only holds four or five hundred people and nxt is packed every week so yeah and number three is that jim Cornette will no longer be with the company after the uh actually before at bound for glory that uh, before then will be his last uh or what i should say is what they've recorded will be his last uh TV spots, uh, he's had some sort of complications with getting into Canada in the past and dealing with the whole process, so he kind of said, you know what, this is it for me, guys. I'm, I'm guessing somewhere in the future that we're going to get a lot more events in Canada, considering that's where Anthem is located. So, anyway, back to the Impact Wrestling Review. So yeah, this was a decent show tonight. Um, this was the go-home show for Victory Road. Unfortunately, Victory Road was taped. Thankfully, I don't know the spoilers, so at least that's a little better for me. But I feel like I've said this time and again, but the Destination X uh, live show last month was so much better because it was live. I mean, I feel like you're going to draw a lot more people if your show is live rather than people going, all right, I'll just go online and read the results. And yeah. So anyway, we opened the show with Johnny Impact looking for Eli Drake, to which the announcers were like, uh, Eli is still in Mexico because he had defended his title uh, recently against um, Bronce. And later on tonight, we'll be getting that match. Uh, for some reason, KM comes out. I don't know about you guys, but KM is a stupid name. I, I, I don't get it. Um, really haven't seen much from him. This is really my first, uh, taste, so to speak, of him in the ring. But, uh, he comes out and tells Johnny what we already know, that Eli is still in Mexico. And then, uh, he, he, Johnny was like, oh, I've seen his car in the park lot. He's gotta be here. And then... KM was like, well, what are you calling me a liar? And then Johnny was like, well, that kid over there is calling you a douche rocket. Which I'm kind of like, really? You guys always have to take the low road on this stuff, don't you? I I, I don't get it. Um, I understand they want to be a little edgier and things like that, but... I feel like it didn't add anything to it. So then you had the crowd yelling douche rocket and him constantly going back to it. So yeah, KM basically says to Johnny Impact to, uh, how about you put your number one contendership on the line in a match with me tonight since I'm undefeated in Impact. So that's how we started the show. So uh, this was a pretty short match, which uh, obviously Johnny came out on top winning with the uh, Thursday Night Delight, which is apparently, I guess, his uh, finishing maneuver where he does the countdown off the top rope and does a corkscrew flip. Um, it's a cool move, and I kind of like the countdown. It really gets the crowd into it, and they go crazy for him. So 
I'm all for it. Uh, up next, we got a match with uh, Taya Valkyrie versus Ava Story. Uh, this was Taya's second match. Last week was her debut match. Uh, this was another quick match. Uh, Taya ended up winning with the Road to Valhalla. So after the match, she grabs the mic and she says that the Lucha Royalty has arrived. And uh, I think she said Karen Jarrett better take notice or something to that. Uh, and she said that she's here for one reason and one reason only, and that's for the Knockouts title. So Rosemary comes out and she's, you know, she says, you know, it's, it's funny that that you think you deserve a title shot before me. So they end up brawling. Sienna comes out. Sienna and Taya both kind of take turns fighting with Rosemary, pulling each other off, wanting to get the upper hand. And at that point, Allie comes out. So now it's even. And Taryn Terrell comes out. So now the heels have a three on two and they're on top. And Gail Kim comes out to make the save and the faces stand tall. So they have a, they have a decent little division here. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anybody else really there. I, I think Ava is a mainstay there. So we'll see, I'm assuming. Well, I was assuming that this was going to lead to a six-woman tag match at Victory Road, which we find out later in the night that it does, and that should be a fun match. So up next we get uh, OVE still in Mexico, where they're going to LAX's hideout to uh, basically tell them they're not leaving without a title match. And uh, so they go inside. I think Homicide was outside the door, and he calls Conan and says, you know, your boys are here. And uh, so we see OV inside, and they're getting lap dances and whatnot. <laughs> and uh, so LAX ends up coming up to them, and uh, they kind of get in their face and pushing and shoving, and OV challenges them to another match, and LAX accepts, and we are going to get a tag title match at Victory Road. So, I mean, I'm glad they've been building this up for a little while because I was disappointed in what we saw was it, last week with the match that turned into a four-team match in, in Crash down in Mexico. So hopefully this should be a good match. Um, I don't expect the feud to end here, regardless of who wins the, the match. I'd assume we'll get the blow-off match at Bound for Glory, but we'll see. Considering how small their tag division is, or I guess these two teams have only been the, the teams that they've been pushing or showcasing, I should say. Uh, it seemed like one of the matches that OVE had, they were just throw together matches, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, up next, we had uh, PD Williams promo, basically saying that Trevor Lee is a disgrace to the X Division and the X Division Championship, and that he's plans on bringing prestige back to the title at Victory Road. So apparently, we're getting Trevor Lee versus PD Williams. I'm wondering if Sonjay is planning on taking a step back since he's on the creative staff so i don't know how that kind of works or how people feel about that with somebody booking themselves in matches and being a wrestler uh feels like uh, wcw all over it i mean as long as he doesn't have too much creative control so up next we got a tag match with pagano and phantasma versus ec3 and eddie edwards uh this match was culmination from what happened last week when uh pagano and uh came into the ring after the match and him and phantasma beat down ec3 and eddie edwards made the save so that's why we have the tag match so this was a fun match uh decent amount uh, of tag uh team work by Pagano and Phantasma, they worked well as a team together, and uh, Borash and Matthews, probably Matthews more or less, saying that these two don't, don't work together as a tag team in AAA. So, you know, this was just like Eddie Edwards and EC3 teaming up since they're not normal partners. So Edwards ends up hitting the Blue Thunder Bomb on Phantasma, and Pagano and EC3 are fighting outside the ring. So... Edwards has the pin, and Tejano comes out, to which we saw earlier on there was a backstage segment with Pagano talking to a mystery figure, which turns out to be Tejano, and uh, basically um, 
Pagano was saying that to Phantasma that we have this taken care of tonight. So obviously that would that would make sense why Tahano would come out. So Tahano comes out and hits Eddie Edwards with a power bomb, and Phantasma gets the win. After the match, the three of them beat down EC3 and Eddie Edwards, to which James Storm comes out and makes the save. Uh, afterward, when the faces stand tall, uh, James Storm shakes Eddie Edwards' hand, but kind of just looks at EC3 and leaves the ring. So, don't know what they're doing here, um, considering what happens next kind of changes things a little bit. Uh, so, Johnny Impact is walking backstage, still looking for Eli Drake, and he runs into Phantasma, Tahano, and Pagano. Uh, Phantasma tells him, he, he's like, he tells him in Spanish that he's not here, and then he tells him in English that he's not here, that he's still in Mexico. So Tejano gets in Johnny's face and is like, you know, I don't like you, and I don't like you in my country of Mexico. So Johnny challenges him and says, I'll put up the number one contendership to uh, to the global title just to shut you up. Up next, we had Congo Kong versus Shira, which I could care less about this. I don't know why this feud happened. I don't know why this stuff is on TV, but I feel like every time somebody looks at Impact Wrestling... And it's like, this is the crap that they see. Um, so this was nothing special. Honestly, I didn't even really pay too much attention to the match because I didn't care about it. And I did see that Kongo Kong ended up winning with a splash from the top rope. So after this, we go backstage to uh, Moose, who's talking about basically his thoughts on Bobby Lashley and the events that transpired last week. So I don't know. I'm guessing this is going to build to a match between the two of them at Bound for Glory, because I don't think they made anything official for Victory Road. I guess it's possible they could have something uh, with between now and Victory Road next Thursday. But, um, yeah, so we go back to ringside, and uh, we get the Tejano and Johnny Impact match. So this was a good match. Um, this is a lot of back and forth. Uh, at one point, Johnny hit a beautiful moonsault on Tejano outside, which he ended up, I guess hurting his leg, or his ankle, I should say. And uh, so this was, like I said, back and forth. Uh, Johnny ends up hitting a sliding German suplex and then hits the Starship Pain for the win. So not a surprise here. So Johnny Impact will definitely be facing Eli Drake next week for the Global Championship. And uh, we get a backstage segment next with uh, Sienna, Taryn Terrell, and Taya going into Karen Jarrett's office and basically demanding a match with Rosemary, Allie, and Gail Kim, which earlier on in the night, they are after the confrontation between all six women, there was a quick backstage segment with Rosemary and uh, Allie and Gail basically saying that they, if, if, if the heels want to challenge them, they're up for it. So, yeah, they basically, uh, Sienna, Ty, and Taryn, want the match next week and Karen Jarrett makes the match and basically says, you know, be careful for what you wish for. So this should be a fun match. I think like I tweeted out earlier on that. I think the knockouts division that impact has is, is a strong division for them. They're all good workers and, uh, entertaining. So like I said, I'm looking forward to the six woman tag next week. So the main event for the show was, uh, Eli Drake defending his global title in Mexico uh, against Bronce. So this was, uh, I guess, taped, I don't know, a week ago, days ago, whatever it was. They did say that, it, or Josh Matthews said earlier in the broadcast that it was taped days before. So at least they weren't trying to say, oh, a lot, you know, a look into Mexico where Eli Drake is defending his title. At least they played it off that he did uh, defend it previously so unfortunately i mean they actually showed the match here but this is what i was hoping we got from the ove and uh lax match from last week but unfortunately that was just a clip show but this was a fun little match this probably lasted about five minutes uh bronce was basically trying to use his speed and uh high flying maneuvers to overpower or not overpower but uh counter eli's power and strength um the uh, 
the Mexico crowd did not like Eli Drake. They were calling him a couple of uh, <laughs> not so nice names and uh, were really getting on his case. So Eli was drawing great heel heat, which is what he is good at. So Eli ends up winning with uh, the gravy train. I think uh, Bronce ended up going off top rope for, uh, for a maneuver, and Eli caught him, turned him around, and hit him with the gravy train for the win. So, uh, yeah, that was your show. Like I said, Victory Road should be a good good show next week. Um, we have the global title match between Eli Drake and Johnny Impact, the tag title match between OV and LAX, the six-woman tag with Rosemary... Gail Kim and Allie versus Sienna, Taya, and Taryn Terrell. We have the X Division cha- Championship match with uh, Trevor Lee defending against Petey Williams. And so it's that four matches. I would assume there will be a couple more matches added to the card. I probably I, I may be forgetting some matches as well. But like I said, I assume there will be at least another match added. But if not, and they give all these matches time to breathe, I'm perfectly fine with that. So, yeah, this was my Impact Wrestling review. If you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.